So today we're off to Westlake Village to see Kitty McMeal's new studio. Wow, this is so beautiful. She has a lake, like a really beautiful lake with boats on it. You don't get a better view than that. My view sucks compared to this, it's amazing. <laughs> my name is Kitty McMeal, and I've been a portrait photographer for two years. This is the beginning of my third year. <gasps> so good to see you. I'm going to try not to cry. I'm so excited. <laughs> I feel like I've always been a creative person. My first job, I was a musician. After that, I got a master's degree in engineering psychology, and I had my own consulting business for 15 years. My husband suffered a spinal cord injury and which rendered him quadriplegic and to be honest at that point I all I could do was care for him and I was left without friends, family, home. Really I it was one of the lowest points of my entire life and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no idea and that's when I got the idea for the nail art salon and I started that in January of 2014 and I never even heard of Sue Bryce. It wasn't until July of 2014 that I first came across her. I'll never forget that day. It changed my life forever. Kitty has this success story. Not in a, I won lotto and now I'm earning $17,000 a month, but I did the work. One year and she had just finished her first $17,000 a month and had three of them back to back. <gasps> this is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Oh, thank you. Look at that. Thank you. Oh, you get to look at that every day? Yeah, it's amazing. When I first saw my studio space, it was actually divided into two rooms and looked pretty bad. But the minute I saw those windows, you know, it's like when you know, you know. To walk in and see windows with diffuse light for a photographer, it's one of the most exciting things that I can ever see. It's so calming. Yes, it is. The water. And the energy you here, need here a boat. is just great. I, I'm getting a boat. <laughs> Hi girls. Hello, this is my you. client Christina, Hi, Christina and hair and makeup Dana. Hi Dana. So what cool. a great makeup area. And you do it natural light, you don't have all any makeup light. lights. Mm -hmm. all it's the best. Light. The, the light from, it, from these windows is amazing. And this is a great chair, look at that. It's got the place for the handbag underneath. Yep. We love it. Where do you get that from? I ordered it um, from a makeup store. Amazing. Yeah. I met Dana about two years ago. I immediately got a great feeling about her. I got her name actually off of Facebook. I saw that she had done the makeup of somebody who I was grooming to be a client. So I thought, what better way? I'm gonna contact the person that she likes doing her hair and makeup. And we just really hit it off right from the beginning. It occurred to me that Dana would be great to partner with. We came together, we rent the space together, and so it's been great for me because it's taken all of that responsibility of hunting for a hair and makeup artist, and I always have somebody now. And it's a perfect mirror. Yeah, it, uh, in my old space, I didn't really have mirrors, and it was kind of a, uh, difficult because the client could never really see how they look, so yeah. this, this is nice here. Little fridge Ooh, yeah, on great. wheels in case we need to move it. Everything's still, the space is very small, so well, you don't everything have a has kitchen. to move. No kitchen. And there's your magazine. My magazine. My magazine, Love and then this. my makeup guide. Isn't it and wonderful? It helps a lot. Every client, I show them this and they're always able to choose because some people cannot articulate what they want. No. Yeah. I've seen people say, think that that's a smoky eye. Yeah. So, yeah. love these. My gallery wall. I purchased these from the same woman um, that did yours. Isn't she amazing? Amazing. Yeah. I, love, I kept two of them for myself at home. <laughs> I did too. Look at the light. Yeah, the light is beautiful in oh, here. These windows go right up. And it's great all day, um, even though it's this is facing west, so it can get very bright in here, but then I just kind of move the light around with my V-flats. And good couch. Great couch. How long have you Ikea. had this? Yeah. This was in my first studio, that yeah. little nine by nine space. Wow. Yeah. And you shoot on that? Shoot on this, mm-hmm. And you've got a perfect corner. Got a good corner. 
and then um, my backdrop system. The ceiling here is a little shorter than my last studio, so um, I'm probably going to be changing that around a little bit and hanging it from the ceiling. Yeah, give Three. you another half a foot or yes. more. How big is this space? It's about 300 square feet. Okay, so it's the same as Ashley's, but all in one room. Yes but still bigger than your first studio. Yes, which was 81 square feet. My first studio was so small, I don't even to this day really know how I got all what I did in that space. I had my couch in that space. I had a blow up bed in my space. I did pretty incredible things in that space. It's so amazing shooting in here because I have so much more room to move back. What's going on here? Okay, so this, <laughs> this is my photo booth. With every client, we have a tradition. Uh, Dana, Christina, come on over here. Um, we're gonna take four little pictures. So don't worry, I'll direct you. Okay. 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 Here's the camera right here. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just nice, pretty smile. Okay. Bend over and stick your tongue out. <laughs> and back to back. Okay, and crazy hand signals. Then I mail it to them afterwards or use in the video. Right. It's always great fun. And it loosens the client up. There we go. <laughs> that was fun. Okay, okay, talk to me about this. Okay, well, um, I have two stools from Ikea, which are great. Uh, two, um, I know I, I got that from my painter. Yeah, oh. That's an awesome ladder. I've been using it a lot. I know, I you love them. You cannot take that with you. Whenever <laughs> I find them, I grab them straight away. Yeah. I almost feel like you could give them a whole lot and get them to paint on them for a few weeks so that they look really authentic. Apple boxes, Apple painted boxes. black. And then and, and natural color apple boxes and this one stool. This was my first posing piece here. Beautiful. I. On my very first shoot, I thought, oh my god, what am I going to sit them on? So I ran to Target and bought that. It's and a great I've one. I've used it ever since. Yeah, yeah. it's sturdy yeah. and it's really cool. Okay, show me your backdrop. Okay, so this one is one that I painted. Beautiful. Oh, I love this. What did you paint that with? Uh, a variety. I had six colors in there and I used rollers and rag and sponge. It's gorgeous. It came out pretty well. Katie, I'm happy it's with it. It's beautiful. I love the black you used. And you use this a lot? I use it a lot. I use it a lot. And then um, this. Did you have this pulley system in your last I studio? I did. I had two of these, one on either wall. OK. This is gorgeous. Yeah, this this one is from Oliphant. Wind it on down. Let's have a look. When did Sarah paint this one? Um, I, I got this. Uh, towards the middle of last year. Oh, it is beautiful. Isn't she just ridiculously I, talented? I, I love this one. I love the color you chose. It's kind of an eggshell, would you say? Yes. Cream? Uh, it's, it was unexpected because I actually wanted a gold one like yours. Okay. But I think I miscommunicated. No, there is no way to communicate color, I've learned. Yeah. And if you send images on, you know, email, you it's just what their screen interprets. But this yeah. is beautiful. It, it's beautiful and, I, and it goes with nearly everything. I do tell people yeah. when you order a custom made Ollie, you're going to get a custom made Ollie. Yeah. Like, I don't think she could even paint two the same anyway, but that's what makes this so beautiful. I adore this color. I, I love it too. Yeah. I it. And I got it long so I can sweep it out. How long is it? It's 14 feet. Oh, okay, eight by 14 feet. Yes. Oh, Kitty, that's amazing. And that's six by nine? Six by nine. Wow, have you painted any others? No. No. And I never will again. No. <laughs> like, it's either, you're either into it or you It's are hard, not. it's hard. It came out, I wished I'd made it wider, but I was experimenting. You can hang it on your tri stand that long that ways. ways. Yeah. But then you can't get a full length or a composition five. Your V flats sit beautifully there. Oh, I see a reveal wall. Yes, my reveal wall is right behind here. This is great. Yeah, this works perfectly. So my very first client, I did a printer reveal, and she only bought three. So the net, for the next client, I decided, well, maybe I had to back off a little bit. I'll print six, and then I'll show her the rest on in digitally, which I did. Now, she purchased all the six that I bought, but we spent probably two and a half hours going through all the other ones, and I think she only ended up purchasing one of the others. So for me, it was not, uh, it was not even a question. I went back to the uh, printed reveal. And you've got a neat little uh, gear tray. Yes, I don't really have any storage in here. So 
This is another find from Ikea. Yeah. So I, I put my gear on here and also my fans. Uh, when I Because I usually don't have an assistant. Yeah. And so I put my fan on here and I can position it around That's wherever fantastic. I need it. That's fantastic. And what fan yeah. are you using? Uh, well, up until this week, I've been using this one. <laughs> but, I, but it doesn't put, put out quite enough air. So I, I've got a new one. Yeah, I have one almost exactly in the next size up yeah. as well. I'll be, I'll be trying this for the first time today. Oh, fantastic. And then you've got another roll away with just more gear on yeah, it. Yeah, I just needed a place to put stuff. Yep. yep. Smart, and I love your TV stand. That's, it's perfect. Uh, there was no space to put anything on the wall in here yep. or I'd have to Photoshop it out. So right. we put that on and I just kind of move it around. About 10 days after my clients come in for their photo session, I invite them back and we do their reveal. Well, after I show their video on the monitor, then I raise the curtain and they see their portraits in person. They never know. And many of my clients don't have any clue that they're going to see something physical when yeah. they come. I don't tell them. And they're, they're often uh, overwhelmed. But it, it, always, it always gives me such joy to see the looks on their face. And now I have enough space where I can actually shoot some of the reveal when they're up looking at their pictures. Yeah. Well, you could use your little selfie cam. Yeah. And I use a GoPro in here too sometimes. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. They always purchase something from a uh, print and reveal. Once they could see and touch and feel it and hold it in their hands, they were not walking out that door without it. And we have to show everyone one these beautiful framed images that you've got on the wall behind there. I actually um, went to Ashley's studio to help her film one of her clients to get some behind the scenes and she had these uh, she had acrylics on the wall I'd never seen them and I loved them so I picked three of my favorites and had them done they're beautiful and, aren't they and I had I had these up in my other space and I have sold these from them being up of course yeah because what you show is what you sell yeah nice oh exciting where do you put her clothes in my wardrobe back here but I try and keep things kind of here so that this becomes where you're standing now will transform into a little changing room. Yeah. And so she'll have access to that and have some privacy. Yeah. Um, I notice most girls are used to their bedrooms being a dressing room. Yes. Like there's usually clothes everywhere, shoes everywhere, nobody cares. Yeah. It just looks like how we all grew up. Yeah. And you can also use your V-flats as a little dressing room. I, ha I have done that as well, yes. And you finally have the space for a backdrop stand. I can't believe it, yes. And so uh, I'd like to show that with you today. Great. All right, let's get shooting. OK. Kitty started a business at 63, which in itself is extraordinary. There is a whole learning curve that comes after 60. How am I going to make that hair blow? Where, from what angle am I going to do that? How do I cull images? How do I upload them to my computer? What do you use for storage? What do you do with all that stuff? And how big are all these files? And oh my god, wait, 7 by 10, I have to crop off half my picture. Now what? But there's also a whole believing in yourself, finding yourself, starting something new at that age that I feel is one of the most compelling stories that I've heard. The number of things that I've had to learn, all of these little steps along the way, you just have, you, you just kind of figure out. I believed with every bone in my body that I could do this. And I just went about doing it because honestly, I had nothing to lose. It's the quickest backdrop change ever. Uh, Let's put a little zhuxing in your hair. Like that. Position, hold, spray, release. Perfect. Sit forward from your hips, that's it. Put your hands here on your thighs, bring your knees together so that they're not open. Look back at us this way, that's it, keep coming. That's a girl. Now bring your chin up there all the way around in this way but more shoulder there you go there you go you did it so dang beautifully i practice when people call my name i'm like that oh. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> okay you move with me you just take the photo okay okay so i want you to tilt down stop with the shoulder in and beautiful big smile now look at me
bring your knee back up and just put, have your hand out that way. All right, here we go, Christina. A little bit close now. Laugh. <laughs> Let's just do a lifestyle shot where you're just cross-legged. That's it, that's beautiful. Now bring your elbows in between your legs so that you're leaning towards Kitty. And whenever you laugh also or smile, always do a slight tilt. Because when we smile, we don't go, ha ha ha, we always use our body. That's it, beautiful yeah, smile. So now bring your hands to your hips and one up just a little bit, chest back just a little bit, drop your shoulders, really kick that hip out. Okay, long chin, give me a little bit of a smile, perfect, gorgeous. Okay, let's step just one inch, two inches away from the wall and now lean back against the wall like that. So, so awkward. Yes, but it looks amazing. <laughs> Touch, slide down. Perfect, just arch your back just a little bit more. Perfect. Towards it. Excellent. Awesome. <laughs> Thank, you so awesome. Thank you for making me feel so comfortable. You did an incredible job. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Kitty is just a likable woman. She's an amazing, likable human. She brings that to her business. She brings that to her service. And not, look, I'm a likable person, but I'm likable, I'm comfortable in who I am, and I am giving something to you, and I'm doing this because I joyfully choose to do so. That's powerful. You started this business when you were 64. 63. Three. That's right, you've this been going is, for a year is, when yes. I met you. You're in your third year now. Yes. I want to talk a little bit about what that feels like. Because can we tell everybody about the business that you got the year before you started this? That failed? Well, hey, <laughs> it, did, it technically it didn't fail. You failed in it yes. because you just went into it. You went, yeah, it wasn't not the, the right. way you're into this. Yeah. So you started a nail business? I started a nail art boutique. This is a very specialized nail art and it uh, was born in Japan. And I had been going to Melrose to have my nails done. I thought, I'm gonna bring this out to Westlake. No one does this out here. So I got my space and hired somebody to do the manicures. But a week before Christmas, she flaked out and left me with a full book of appointments. So I had to close down. I uh, offered everyone complimentary photography shoots because I had to keep the space. And honestly, that sort of was what propelled me into to actually having a studio because I already had that lease. I had to keep it. Um, I think we should show people right about now some images of your very first studio space. How big was your first studio space? It was nine by nine, 81 square feet. 81 square mm -hmm. feet. And how long were you there for? Two years. And if I told you what I was paying for rent over there, you'd die. What do you pay for this? This, I'm well, I'm sharing this with my hair and makeup. Yeah. So I pay $650 a month. I was paying 3,500 a month. For a space a for third a space of the a size. For a third of the size. Yeah almost a fourth of yeah. the size. Wow. Yeah. And how much money did you make in that space? Last year I made almost $100,000. And the year before? Um, which was I your first Which was my first year, year in business. I, I don't recall exact. I think it was about 72,000 yeah. first year. In your tiny little 81 yes. square feet. Yes. So although it was only 81 square feet, it, it did the job. For two years. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? A lot of people can't earn $170,000 in their first two years of a business. Yeah. So you actually made a profit. Yes, it all started with the nail art salon. A friend of mine told me, you need to meet this woman. She will help promote your business. You can put an ad in uh, her magazine. She will come to you and cover your grand opening. And we were introduced by a mutual friend. We had lunch and just started talking and then, um, one thing or another, she just said, do you want to come and photograph this event? And that started it all. And you certainly weren't an event photographer. No. 
no, I'd never, never shot anything. But she's not a photographer either, yeah. so she really never had a real photographer, and now I am a real photographer. Yeah. So, uh, with a real camera. And I want to show you this because yeah. they've never used a photograph on the cover of their magazine. Until and now. now they're using my photograph yep. on the cover of the it's magazine. It's got your name signed on yep. there and everything. Yep. So, here's where I think a lot of people get hung up. Um, for me, I look for an opportunity in every opportunity that I'm offered. Uh, a lot of people are like, somebody wanted me to do an event for free and that's what they're seeing. And I'm like, well, okay, it, there's no such thing as a free lunch. In, in any world, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Somebody can always give you something because there must be a reciprocal, equal balance exchange of business. And if you walk in giving and saying, I would love to shoot your event, what's in this for me? I would love to be able to meet and network clients. I would love for these people to get my gift voucher. I would love a free advertisement in your magazine. I would love a, my PDF shown on the screen at the event. There are a million ways to ask for an equal exchange. Stop thinking everybody is just asking for something for free yeah. and put yourself into the equation and balance it. And sometimes it takes a little bit of time to develop that relationship. So maybe you do a little bit for, sure. for free at the beginning and Cover my costs and let's make a friendship. Yeah. Uh, you're established, you've got your studio space, you're shooting beautifully in your space. That leaves two things, marketing and selling. Um, what do you find the easiest when it comes to marketing, networking, and what do you find the hardest? When you saw the marketing intensive, which side did you sit on, presentation marketing or publication? I'm the most comfortable behind my computer. Yeah. I'm really good at networking, but it's totally not my comfort zone. So I, I do a little bit of both. I often have never personally spoken with a client, even on the phone, when they walk in my door. I do a lot of it by email. Um, and now I get a lot of referrals. But when I'm out there marketing at one of these events that I shoot f for that magazine, I, I meet so many people. But at this point, now my name is known. In this area, they know who I am. Three years? Yeah. And I, I'm often shocked at how, how known I am. Yeah, that's pretty incredible, yeah. isn't it? So one of the first things I saw when I walked into your space was this. Tell me about that. Well, um, this is my cash register, and I have my um, website displaying on it when I'm not using it as a cash register. And obviously the gallery that you have on your website is constantly changing. Yes. So it sits right beside your makeup table and that's how you take payments from your sales? Yes. Perfect. And it's in a neat little stand. Yes. And it's, that's square. It's a bit expensive, 3% off of every sale. But for me, I find it's, it's a great record keeping. It's not an accounting uh, software per se, but everything that I need to know, including average sale, I can glean from that. Great. So it's been good for me. And do you find people stop and watch that gallery? Yes. 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 When and getting shoot there, me right? like this, oh, I'd love that picture. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, what was your go-to marketing? What was the first thing you created for your marketing? The accordion card. This one? Yes. Okay, and I see you've got two different ones. I do. I also love that you've put yourself on the cover of your accordion because to me, that's how you sell portraits. Like, I have a portrait, mm -hmm. you have a portrait. You know, what I love the most about the accordion is that you get to showcase eight images. Yes. So you've done good. You've got a couple, a guy, a young girl, a corporate look, a mother and daughter, a family, and this one is three generations, a couple, you, a gorgeous young girl laughing, older women. And then on this one, I did the transformations. I usually will give this one to family and, pers or, and personal branding, Before and this shots. one more for just women. Yeah, amazing. When did you get your magazine? That's my third one. Wow, are yeah. you addicted to them? Uh, yes, I, I do one, and now I, it's so easy just to swap out the pictures. And I change it around a little bit, but I like to make it sort of seasonal. So uh, this was, was my winter one. I, I don't have the hard copy of my summer. I love having the magazine, but I find it most beneficial for me just to use it as a PDF. I send it to every single new client. Here is a, co a copy of my latest magazine, um, so you can view my work. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing though, isn't it, to see it designed this way? I, I love it. I love it. So I believe 
the greatest shift in value comes from the photographer that holds their own magazine. I believe that the shift comes in you when you see your work like this. Yeah. Yeah, and it gives you a sense of um, professionalism. It certainly does. When I show people my magazine or my accordion cards, because when somebody asks me for my card, I give them this. Yeah, and I, they're not expecting it, are they? No. I, I remember the first time I did it, uh, 2004, and people would literally go like this, and I would watch them open it and then see the images and then I'd watch them turn it and they would always say the same thing and they go, you're really good. Yeah. And I'd go, thanks. Yeah. I'd love to photograph you. You know, I just would watch them, like it validated me. And I don't mean that I was good enough. It validated me in a way where I was like, I'm a professional yes. or, or I felt it in like, I'm. I'm a professional photographer I, and this is my work. I feel exactly the same way. When I display my card to someone, they, their eyes light up. They're, they're quite surprised by it. And I'm very careful about what I choose for the images for this because I, I select ones that are either got the most likes because yep. I know. Of course, they're generic. Yeah. And it, that people are drawn to these people for a reason. Mm -hmm. So I learned a long time ago when choosing marketing that the idea is that the energy of the people you choose is very, very strongly in the way people react. Mm -hmm. Like this girl to me, she is beautiful, but she's attainable. She's what I call that girl next door beauty. Mm -hmm. She's laughing, she's gorgeous, she's vital, but she's not so beautiful that I couldn't be this girl. Right. Like there's something about her, I wanna be friends with her. Like I think she's just absolutely fabulous. You've chosen really well. And, and she looks like shot. she's having the time of her life. Yeah, exactly right. Because otherwise everybody looks really stiff mouth and like yeah. bored and we don't just want to, we want people to understand our images. I love this guy, amazing. This is Nick and Poncho. He's a YouTuber. Oh, no way. His dog does yoga videos. And so I contacted him and said, I'd love to have you come to my studio. He's from Italy. Wow. And he was in town and came to my studio and we got some great images. Look at that dog. But you know, he obviously speaks to an audience. Yes. I, I like him. I'm yeah. definitely attracted to his face and it makes a big difference, right? Yeah. I notice you've done a really beautiful job of doing a canvas open book of your price list. Yes, that's the only price list I have. Yes. And um, I use that only during the reveal. Even though I've sent people prices over and over again, they often still don't really know what they are. Of course. So I, I always, and sometimes I don't know either, because <laughs> I forget, but I, um, I give that to them to look at. So let's talk through a portrait sitting 290. Yes. Style and concept consultation, hair and makeup, fully directed posing, premiere sales and ordering session. Yes. Beautifully written. Thank you. Um, I see it says personal branding 540, style and concept consultation, fully directed posing, three high resolution digital images, virtual viewing session. And then you've got event coverage, $350 per hour. Yes. Good. And do you do many events? Not a lot. Um, mostly uh, for only, marketing and networking. Yes. Yes. Only for networking and or if it's a previous client. Okay. Good girl. Um, so 290, how long has your sitting fee been that high? Since day one. And do you take it before the shoot? I take a hundred dollar session retainer that applies towards that session fee and if they don't show up or cancel within 24 hours I, I, I keep the session retainer. You keep the $100. Um, then you've got three primary packages. Starting collection 1800, 10 image folio box, uh, signature collection 2600, and I see you've got a little star there that says most popular. Yes. Good girl. Uh, 15 image folio box and a wall portrait. Yes. Okay, and then you've got your luxury collection, which is 25 image folio and 25 um, portraits and 15 gift prints and a 1620 wall portrait. Now, uh, tell me, what is your average right now? 2600. Okay, so 
you've written most popular, they're purchasing your middle package, which is exactly as I teach. They're gonna purchase your middle package. How often do you push up into your luxury collection? Not very often, actually. Um, I, I started, since the sales intensive started mar or selling the way you suggested with putting everything up and this with everything here is my top package. Um, but I just find people are reluctant to have that many images. Sure, but so, you are giving a very full collection for your central package. Yes, and that was the whole idea. Yeah. I want to sell my middle Plump package. your middle package. I, I don't want to stock multiple boxes mm -hmm. of different sizes. I want to keep it simple as possible. And I actually don't sell the wall portrait very often because I always give them the option of having the wall portrait or the video. Oh, and they, they take often the video. take the video. And which is fine with me because that's already done. Okay. So you could offer the video for an extra hundred, push it up to two seven and give a wall portrait. Yes. Yeah. Okay, your a la carte images, 7x10, 250, 16, 20, 750. Um, then you've got your keepsake video at 500 and a mini album at 550, which is an add-on package not available separately. How many of those are you moving? I've never sold one. Okay, do you show one? No, no, yeah. yeah. So you won't sell it until you show it, but if you had one here, you'd probably move it. I, I would, but my whole thing, especially moving forward, is I want to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. And I'm happy to just sell my medium package with a folio yeah. box and repeat it over and sure. over again. Why not? I mean, <laughs> I totally agree with you. Okay, so interestingly enough, um, when did you go up to this price list? Right after the sales intensive. Yeah, and before that, what was your average? I, uh, my average, well, my average does not really changed, interestingly. I sold, um, it was just slightly under 2600 Yeah. Well, my largest sale has been $10,000. Yeah. And that was a generation shoot. Okay, how many? They bought, uh, there were four people, and they bought uh, one box with 40 and a second. Right. Yeah, amazing. Are you I printing like your own work? I am. And I love that. I, lo I have the Pro 1000 now. Best printer in I'd the world. I'd love to get that one though that you have, the 44 inches. I know, but have 60, you seen how big I know, it is? That I need more space. <laughs> you always need more space, yeah, but I'd love to be able to print those huge um, images. And tell, tell me about your home office. Obviously your printer is yeah, at your home office. My, you work at home. I work at home. I have a small uh, standing desk because I spend too many hours to be sitting all the time. And uh, I have an iMac 27 inch and uh, my Pro 1000. I do, I do all my uh, retouching in Photoshop. I use Lightroom just as a culling and, ke mm -hmm. and uh, keeping track of what I've printed and stuff mm -hmm. and cropping in there. And um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very small room, but it's uh, plenty good enough for me. What would you change in the next year if you could change anything magically? There's a little office for rent in this building that's half the size of this. I'd love to be able to rent that and have my editing bay in there with the beautiful view and a little storage. And because um, I'd like to get out of the house more than stay at home all the time. Because I do, I do spend probably too long retouching. But for me, it's really finishing my images. I feel like it's part of the journey. Yeah, it, it makes them mine. Okay, you are established, you're in your third year. Yes. Um, lots of unique challenges. Yes. Uh, when you built the space, you called me and you said, what if I don't get another client? Yes. Yeah, because we wake up some days and we think, what if this goes away? And it's a real thing, right? Yeah. Why? What did you go through? I, I don't even understand what it meant uh, and why I did it, but I just felt like, and I signed a three-year lease here. What if no one Was comes? Was it that pressure? I think, I think so. It, it, it's been kind of a dichotomy because on one hand, I'm relieved of that huge rent to pay every month. But in a way, it almost was a driving force because I had to make that rent every month. So yeah. I had to get out there and hustle. All of a sudden, my rent is less. And and some of that pressure was gone. And then I, I maybe didn't market as much. And plus, I really worked hard the last two years. And I think I burned myself out a little bit. I started really not looking forward to it. 
So I settled for a couple months and didn't did only minimal work. It's great. Yeah, and now I'm booked through June. Yeah, you've got so, to though. Yeah, you've got to every now and then. You've got to just back up. Yeah. I always say to people, don't be afraid that you're going to lose work. You will replenish, and if you don't replenish, the energy in your business will just go away. Like you yeah. won't be able to sustain it because you are the energy in your business. So I said to you, Kitty, you need to replenish. You need to reconnect, mm -hmm. reconnect to the space and reconnect to why you photograph people. Was selling an easy thing for you? No, and it's still, it's the thing I hate most. Because when I met you, you told me you would do this for free. Yeah. And I said, you're not allowed to say that. <laughs> Because that's not a good business model. I know, I know. It, it's so hard. Well, I, I do, I call it ABS, really. I always be selling. Because from the minute you sit next to somebody at, yeah, the minute you sit ABS. next to somebody at, at a bar. Oh, yeah. Or, and you strike You're up a conversation. Something. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, but the, the part in the, when I do my reveal, and I actually have to ask for the sale, I still have trouble with that. And um, for example, I just did a portrait, a senior portrait for the daughter of a very dear and old friend of mine. So they bought my largest package, but I discounted it because they I've known them for years and years and years hey, and years. How much did you discount it? A lot. A I, half? Uh, no, 70%. So I know, <laughs> Susan, but, but um, <laughs> so I sold it to him for fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, oh! But that was worth my more than worth my time. Of course, I got beautiful images. Yes, they are happy. They have a gorgeous box with my name on it. Fifty is good, though. Fifty is good. <laughs> fifty. We'll go fifty next yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. Fifty. Three and three thousand. What is your yeah. largest package? Thirty-five hundred. Oh, but yeah. they See? wanted e they Fips. wanted extra. So. Seventeen fifty. Yeah. Slice it down the middle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Um, I, and I find, this is what's unusual, I find that I've gotten worse. Yeah, because you know what? I made her put her prices up, yeah. and as soon as I put her prices up, her anxiety came in. It was almost like, I was like, Kitty, it's time to go up. And she was like, sure, I can put my prices up. And then within a week, it's like, I can't, I can't do this. Nobody's going to buy this. And it was all coming from inside you. Yeah, and, and nothing changed in terms of what package would sell. My medium package would still sell. And I really didn't believe in those prices when I put them up. Yeah. I didn't. But, um, but th they still worked. Transitioning out of last year, however, I feel like I went through some kind of thing where I just didn't have, I lost some confidence. And especially during the sale. And yet nothing happened to you from a client that would make you lose your confidence. No. Nothing. No. It, it was dull. about you. Yeah being worried about putting your prices up yeah. after the sales intensive. Yeah. I watched you go through it. Yeah. Like I watched you go to a place of such discomfort. You know, Kitty, I tell you right now, when somebody walks out of here with one of your boxes, they will treasure that for the rest of their lives. You might never see them again. And they will look at your images every year. They become more valuable. The older they get, the more valuable they are. And one day, one day really, really soon, they're worth more money than they could ever yeah. give you for them. And you have to keep reminding yourself of the value, not that you're getting paid. Because even at 3,500, you're not getting 3,500. No. Once your expenses are taken out of that, that's not what you're taking home. And then once you take that home, you pay the tax on that. You, that's still not what you're getting. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? It is. It's a value game. What would be your desired income this year? Um, I, I would be happy if I could reduce my overhead to be less than 30%. Okay. Yes, um, you definitely need to yes, do that. Yes, because it was basically 58% last okay. year. So I'd be happy to earn the same amount I did last year but reduce my overhead costs so that I really am giving myself a raise. Yes. But I don't have a desire uh, to become, or to make hundreds of thousands of dollars. I want to have a comfortable living in, and I want to enjoy my life. I, don't, I would like to shoot 
four times, maybe five times a month. I've been doing some mentoring. I like to do that. I'm good at that. I'd like to have a couple mentoring students a month, and that's enough for me. Yeah. What would you tell a man or woman over 60, over 50, who thinks that they're too old to start a new career? What would you tell them? You're never too old, never too old. You have to get rid of the word can't from your, your vocabulary and just just do it, just go for it. Because 65, 45, 25, yeah. you just have to do the work. There's always a way. Yeah. If you want something, there's a way. Yeah. If you don't, there's a way to fail at it. And you know, Sue, I never thought about, maybe I can't do this. I never thought that for one minute. I just kept problem solving. Yeah, but Even, that's business. Yeah, and, um, and truly, when I first saw you, you really touched me and made me believe that I could do this. And I never questioned it. I really never did. I just went forward. What do you love the most about shooting this style of portraiture? I think we are connecting with, um, with people in general, but I have to say that I really enjoy shooting women in my age and, you know, 50 and up, even though I'm a little older than 50 because so many of them really, as you've pointed out a numerous times, were forgotten. And yet we are probably the largest demographic you are financially. The largest uh, shopping demographic yeah. in the world. And, um, and we've spent our entire lives doing for everyone but ourselves. And so many women, so many women, they don't ever do anything for themselves. No. So it's a joy for me to see those women. So and it's actually a thing. It's called the burnt chop syndrome. The, the what? Burnt chop. So the mother serves chops for dinner and mm -hmm. she gives herself the burnt chop. Yeah. It's like they're always the last on the shopping yeah. list. Yeah. On the shopping demographic internationally, it's called family first because the family comes first, you come last on the shopping list, and then there's a cycle of poor me, I'm always giving to others. And it's so interesting that women do it and fall into it quite naturally and then complain about it because we do. But the one thing that shocks me the most is the one thing that I've experienced in the last 10 years shooting women is I really wasn't interested in photographing older women when I was younger. Yeah. And the reason I wasn't was they, when I was in my 20s, they weren't very nice to me. And I realized that what they were doing was not being rude to me. They were uncomfortable and I didn't understand it or know how to make them feel good. As I got into my 30s, well, first time I started putting on weight, my body changed a little bit, I started to age, I started to understand and have a little bit more compassion for um, their discomfort in front of the camera. And then I started to realize this had nothing to do with me and everything to do with them wanting to be photographed, but also experiencing themselves at the same time. As I grew into my 30s and then 40s, I fell so in love with this demographic. I could just photograph older women all day, every day, with their daughters, with their husbands, with their grandchildren. I just love this demographic and the wealth that it brings to my business. I'd like to say one more thing about people my age. You have a gift that, that somebody younger than you does not have, and that is perspective. And that is only comes with time. You cannot get it any other way. And that's like our superpower. When are you 65? I'll be 66 in June. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, you know I never admitted my age until I, know, I met you. And then I told everybody. Yeah. So I was like, she's 63. Can't lie anymore. <laughs> I, I swear, I, I have to pinch myself at times. When I, when I look at what, and I'm honestly very proud of what I've done. Good girl. Because I've, I've done a lot of things in my life, but, but never anything this much for me. I, I always had a job that, I, I, I had good jobs, I did a lot, but for, there's something about this that just fills something inside of me that nothing has ever done, even when I was a musician. This just fills that creative, that, I, I don't know, that place in my soul. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Yeah. I don't really think there's anything I would change at this moment. I, I always want to be better. I, I still feel I have a long way to go, 
um, sometimes posing leaves my head. You've been shooting for th uh, two and a half years. Yeah, I know. And I can't compare my chapter one with somebody's chapter 27. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. Yeah. But you're going to be just better and better every yeah. single year. I do feel a slight urgency because I don't have all the time in the world. I don't have, I, I don't know that I could ever say uh, I've been doing this for 27 years because there, that may not even be possible. Well, I don't know. I could imagine you turning 100 and going, I started this business when I was 63. <laughs> and I've been doing it for 40 years. <laughs> Push me forward, Abby. <laughs> yeah. I need to get a tighter shot. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? That would be great. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't it? it? I think you're a story for every human being, and I won't say women because there are so many men out there as well turning 60 that never found a career that made them happy. And I think you're, you're more than a success story. You, you're a light for so many people that can start a career whenever they want and just enjoy it. When you realize you've lived longer than you have yet to live, it does some, it changes your perspective such that the reason you're doing this is different. I think I told you, we, I see myself in every portrait I take, literally. I because, do too. Yeah, I'm, we're, I'm, we're in their eyes. Yeah. And for, for me, I'm, th those are my children. I don't have children. This is what I'm leaving behind. This is your swan song. You should go to magazines, you should go to the AARP, you should uh, sing it loud and proud and own that you're 66 in business, on your own, supporting yourself. Because Kitty, that is a remarkable story and the more people that watch this, the prouder I'll be. Me too. And I can't thank you enough, Sue. You did the work, my friend. Well, <laughs> you led the way. If Kitty's been in business for two and a half years and she's sustaining herself in business, her clients are happy, her work is beautiful, it's a professional standard of work, she's professionally prized, she's raising our industry, and she's joyful, that is what is so incredible. I don't think you can teach people how to find their own joy, but when they do find it with a path that is laid out in this way, it seems to be an extraordinary journey and it's certainly a great journey to watch. I was thinking about Sue coming here today and the road that I've been on that has now led to this and I don't have words because at my most darkest hour she was a shining light for me and made me believe that I could do whatever I wanted to. No matter what I do, no matter where I go, I can never repay her for what she's given to me if I live to be a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. You're welcome. It Most was welcome. so wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. I'll never forget it. Let's go and drink a bottle of wine. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> oh, you have the best view in the world. It's gorgeous. I want a lake. <laughs>